right, so welcome back to our next session with Nick Jones and Mohit Gupta on Dismantling the Beast, formally proving access at scale in AWS. Um, before they start, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Stacklet. Stacklet allows you to easily codify and automate cloud governance for a frictionless developer experience. Developed by the creators of Cloud Custodian, Stacklet Cloud Governance is cloud platform lets organizations simultaneously move fast and stay secure in the public cloud. Over to you, Nick and Mohit. Thank you. Thank you. So, when it comes to dealing with IAM at scale in any cloud provider, I think we've probably all been there. Um, it gets pretty hard, pretty complicated, right? So, a lot of this, we're here today to talk about some things we've done to try and simplify it, um, and also to hopefully uh, inspire others to, take you, to make use of some of what we're doing. Um, do we have some slides if I start clicking? No, we don't. Um, um, no. Hey, fantastic, right. So, what we're here to talk about today then, I am complex, that's not gonna be a surprise to anyone. The interesting bits are the latter two probably in that um, we've built out a SMT solver to uh, essentially ingest all of the different policies and resources across an AWS organization and give you an answer as to whether a particular action is possible or not. Um, and it's been built as a library so that you can take it away and use it in other projects. Um, and we'll be open sourcing it probably tomorrow now. Code needs a little bit of tidying, but it's almost there. Um, usual story, I think. So who are we? Why are we standing here? Um, I'm the cloud security leader with Secure Consulting. Um, my hit's one of my best consultants, so we've been working on this internally. Um, to support a lot of the penetration testing, red teaming, those kinds of activities that we, we do. So, um, why is IAM such a hard problem? Um, organizations are doing more and more cloud, right? I think that's probably not a surprise to anyone either. Um, what we found over the last five years with a lot of our consulting clients is they've gone from being an AWS house or an Azure house to suddenly they're running three, maybe even four, in some cases, different providers. Um, it gets really interesting when you start dealing with organizations that operate in China in particular, because AWS China is sufficiently far behind mainstream AWS in my experience that you'll find people do Huawei or Tencent or Alibaba or something like that, um, and they're their own pile of problems. Um, but dealing with one identity and access management system is bad enough. When you're dealing with three or four, it gets really bad, right? Um, and the systems get worse over time as more and more features, more services and things are bored into the mix. Um, so, thank you, Ian, you'll probably recognize these. Um, this is off permissions.cloud. Um, I'm gonna pick on AWS first, because that's what we're here talking about. Um, these actually, these numbers are a little bit out of date, but you're looking at over 12,500 unique permissions for AWS. Um, Azure is even worse, worse they're the wrong side of 14,000 now. Um, GCP a little bit simpler, um, but we're still looking at, yeah, over nearly 6,000 IAM actions at this point. Um, so while I'm picking on AWS here, it's more that's what we work on. It's not really an AWS problem specifically. Um, it is complex though. I think AWS probably has the most complicated of the models of different places you can approve or deny an action of the providers that I've seen. Um, I think that's a seven step flow chart there, um, straight out of the AWS documentation. Um, when you then combine that also with role assumption, um, especially role chaining, which was flagged in the previous talk as an area that a lot of AWS's own tools uh, doesn't really cover terribly well. Um, a lot of this gets really complicated, right? Um, and so trying to reason about what a particular user, what a particular system can do across an AWS estate of a few hundred accounts becomes incredibly challenging. But at the end of the day, I think we also need to recognize that the reason these systems are that complex is because even if no one ever actually does it, we should be aiming for principle of least privilege, at least for the really sensitive stuff. Um, most organizations aim at it, some get maybe 70 or 80% of the way there. Um, but when you combine that with the complexity of the providers, the hundreds of services, all the different API actions, we get to a point where this is needed, but it also makes everyone's lives really hard, right? And the end result, something like 60% of cloud breaches, according to uh, Rami McCarthy's data set, are credential related in some fashion. And I would argue pretty much every breach I've seen and every incident that my incident response teams called me into to help out with has been made worse by some IAM misconfiguration somewhere. It might well be that credentials weren't the initial breach point, but wherever it is they've got in, if you end up with more permissions than it really needed, the chances are more data's getting stolen, more things are getting ransomware, whatever else, right? 
Um, so this is important in pretty much any breach scenario I've ever run into. But clearly, we're not the first people to have thought that this is a problem. Um, quite a few smart people have been working on this already. Um, I know Eric was here last year presenting PMapper. Um, that's been really useful for us uh, for a lot of things. Uh, cloud splaining, Kinead's around somewhere, I think. Um, also great for digging into which policies are going to be most dangerous, which roles are most dangerous, um, in a way that you can give to a dev team and actually you know, have them do something with it, um, which is often the problem with a lot of these. Um, cartography is not really security or IAM specific, um, but it's a good way of mapping relationships between uh, things in a cloud provider. Um, so we use it for that a fair bit. Um, and it would be remiss of me not to mention also on the commercial end of things, a lot of the CSPMs are starting to do really interesting things in this space, right? Um, what started out originally as, let's do some vulnerability analysis and pull some values out of a JSON file to, to report some vulnerabilities. Um, these cloud security posture management tools are now moving to mapping out uh, relationships between vulnerabilities and the permissions that these different entities have. Um, and so it'll be really exciting, I think, to see where that goes in the commercial space over the next year or two. Um, lastly, I also want to give a nod to uh, one of our ex-colleagues down in our South Africa office for Auspex. Um, Craig Korn built that out years ago now, and at the time, it was fantastic. These days, uh, unfortunately, because it's single account only, it doesn't understand multi-account systems, um, it's not much use in bigger organizations. But if you really need to dig into the specifics of something within the context of a single account, um, it is still pretty useful. That said, one of the things that I ran into all the time uh, working with large enterprises is they want you to come in and do an assessment of their security of their AWS estate, which is great. And then they say, we've got 450 AWS accounts. And you go, OK, this is going to take a little while. Um, and a lot of these tools either, um, they're designed to answer specific questions, right? Can this thing do this? Does this particular policy have this problem with it? Um, whereas flipping that on its head, coming in as someone who's doing a, a red team or a penetration test, what we're really interested in is where are the crown jewels? What are the ways I can get to them? What are the most dangerous roles they've got across the entire organization? And how can I get to that? Um, so I'm Hunter flipped that on its head a little bit. And essentially, um, we ingest all of the different um, get account authorization details output for all the different accounts in the organization. Um, and it knows about uh, most of the common privest techniques. And it, it goes through the, the different roles and things to pick out. This one looks really dangerous. This one looks really dangerous to give you a starting point. Um, but that originally was fairly dumb. It just parsed the policies that were applied to the individual roles. Um, and that meant there were a bunch of false positives. Um, you know, the role trust policies only give you one half of the picture as to whether someone can assume this role. Um, so it was a useful starting point, fair bit of false positives. Um, and that was where we started digging into needing a library to unpack and elaborate on uh, how all of this stuff actually fits together, all these different policy mechanisms, um, so that we could make more informed judgment calls in tools like this, which is where IAM Spy comes in. Yeah, this is where IAM Spy comes in. Um, so IAM Spy is basically a tool that we've built um, that kind of uses SMT solvers uh, to kind of you know query the IAM model and basically load it in and let us ask questions. Um, now, if you looked at the list that Nick brought up earlier with like PMapper and, and all that kind of stuff, most of those things already you know, have their own inbuilt IAM parsing thing. So you know, the standard thing, we see a whole bunch of them, we make another one being like, yeah, this one will be universal. Um, and hopefully it will, but we know how this works. Um, but it, at the core of it, IAM Spy uses SMT server, server called S, uh, Z3. Um, and this basically allows us to define uh, IAM as a mathematical model. Um, and basically add constraints, for example, the action must conform to this if principle is set to this, as an example. Um, and then once we have all of that uh, created as constraints, we can then query it saying, could at this entity, could this role do this action against this resource in this account? And it'll be able to compute that and say yes, no, maybe, and, and we can start building upon that data into things like uh, I am Hunter. Now this isn't new, um, so, if you were in the talk just before this, Kaushik did an awesome job at explaining Zelkova, the thing that AWS built, um, as well as some of the ways that they use it and some of the fun he's been having playing with it. But also, you know, that uh, if you are all interested in further stuff, if you haven't, you know, got a time machine or watching it on YouTube, there's also the uh, Zelkova paper um, on the internet somewhere that you can have a nice read through. 
Um, but the entire value of this is condensing down the iron problem to the simple, can this entity do this action on this resource? And the way it does this is it looks at all of the policies that are within AWS. So the identity-based policies, the resource policies, the uh, trust relationships, so on and so forth. We compile that down into our constraints model. Um, and then, you know, that alongside the conditions that are applied to a, a request, for example, is multi-factor authentication um, present and, and all that kind of stuff, as well as, you know, what entity we're pretending to be. Uh, we can come out with a yes, no. In reality, it comes out with a true false, but for the slides, we thought we'd put it up to an approved original with green and yellow. Um, and so this opens the potential for a lot of cool things, we think. Um, so Nick's also already shown like I am Hunter where he's using it to you know get data for an entire organization um, But you know we could also do a lot of cool things like graphing visualization Seeing where the vulnerabilities are and what a kind of blast radius that kind of gives you which also helps with like the detection res uh, Response side side where like we know that this account's been compromised. We know these roles have been compromised What does that give an attacker? What do we need to protect? Where do we need to focus our efforts? Furthermore, you could probably build some tooling around having it in the pipelines on uh, when you know developers are pushing their cloud formation, their Terraform, whatever infrastructure is code that you're probably using. If not, I'm concerned about how you're doing it. Um, you can then say this role should never be able to you know assume any role in the world. You can quickly create some regression testing. See, all right, now it's not doing it. Let's make sure they never do it again. And if they do, just quickly say no. You're not allowed to do that. Um, so. For a quick demo. Make sure that doesn't fall. Thank you. So I've got a few quick demos to quickly show off I'm Spy, and then um, Nick will show a few things on I'm Hunter if we have some time. I'm hoping people can see the screen fine. Shout if not. Yep, yep, okay. yep awesome. Cool. So the first demo, uh, this is the GAD that we've loaded into I'm Spy. It's a very basic GAD with a single role with the inline policies. The role is called um, name because I'm very imaginative with names. And it's got a simple policy saying, you know, we're allowed to get object on, a, on any resource. Um, so we run IamSpy. Oh, give me a second. Let me just load up IamSpy. So we query IamSpy and say, can this role that we've just created can that invoke a lambda function um, on this, you know, arbitrary lambda arm? And of course, as you'd expect, we get false because we haven't given it the permissions. Of course, once we give it the permissions by changing S3 get object to lambda invoke function, and we do the same query, we get true, suggesting it, it is loading that up. Um, IAMS5 will also take into account cross account access and be like, just because an identity policy says you're allowed. Uh, Lambda, and it's in a different account, that doesn't automatically mean you have access. So over here, we've, we're doing the same thing. We have Lambda invoke function, except this time, you'll see that the two accounts are different. Over here, it ends in 0 and 2. Over here, we have all 1s, and once again, we get to false. Um, of course, uh, resource policies are a thing that are commonly used to support these kind of functionalities on allowing that cross-account access, and which you can load in into IMSPY. So over here, we're loading a um, policy, a resource policy for this Lambda function, saying that you know, this account is allowed to execute within it, so this combined with the identity policy should allow um, the action to execute. Um, and then the final bit I'd quickly want to show everyone is conditions, because you know, conditions are a massive pain in the ass for everyone. I hate them. Um, so over here, we're, we're saying that you know, we're, you're allowed to invoke function um, Provided that you know you're being referred by Bobby Tables, because who else wouldn't? Um, and now this is where I'm trying to get a little interesting. By default, we don't want it to be strict condition enforcing. So if, if you'll notice that if I still run I'm Spy, um, it still tells me true. I'm allowed, but that's because it's saying, well, it, AWS refer needs to be set to Bobby Tables, but I can do that. There's nothing stopping me setting Bobby Tables uh, as a referrer header. If it's something you actually want to care about and you want to double check. Uh, you can also pass in strict conditions saying, no, no, don't assume anything, only do, do what I tell you regarding conditions, and at which point we get false. Um, but then, of course, as always, we can just pass in that, you know, we are being referred by Bobby Tables, and once again, once we set um, Bobby Tables as a condition, we then get true both with and without strict conditions. Awesome. Um, and then here we have I am Hunter in its current state. 
Um, this is the sort of the human readable version, and um, all the data that is here is also dumped out into YAML files for you to parse and do other things with. Um, but we're using I am spy in the context of this now. Um, sorry, I'll step away from the other mic. Um, so you can see here um, what we've got is the data about this role. Um, so I am hunters pulled out uh, the other accounts that are referenced in the role trust policy, and then we use I am spy to enumerate what of the many, many roles across this organization. Um, I think we've got 13 accounts loaded and it's about 1,500 roles. It's gone through and it's pulled out the roles that can actually assume this particular thing and get those permissions. Um, and if we close that one down, no hit and open uh, that. Yeah, um, and then it comes with having parsed all the policies. Um, these are the different privilege escalation methods that we know about and because Rhino are awesome, they've got some nice guides on how to exploit these things. Um, so we link people straight out to that. Um, so this is an example of where we've used IamSpy to significantly improve an existing tool. Um, and we'll be open sourcing this in a couple of weeks once I get around to tidying the code base off as well. Um, so back to, the, back to the deck. Cool. So where are we going next with IamSpy? And uh, so at the moment, we've got a lot of the IAM model loaded in and parsing, not everything yet. So things like SAPs, permissions, boundaries, and a few little quirks in IAM still haven't fully been loaded into how the constraints are being generated, which we're still working on. Um, but then also, there's additional functionality that we think could make life a lot easier for security testers and people working in the security industry. Um, for example, explain. So I know AWS historically have been really bad at telling you, all right, you have permission denied. Why do you have permission denied? Um, but then theoretically, we could do that because we have all the data and we have it you know, telling us yes, no. We can also ask it, why is that yes? Why is that a no? Um, furthermore, uh, one thing I like to call yes, but um, is you can do this, but. So going back to the idea of conditions, we have this request that is going into uh, AWS's APIs. Um, and it would be yes, but there's some conditions that need to be set that you don't know about. So for example, let's say that the allow statement comes with a condition saying you must come from this source VPC. And instead of us going trawling through you know, thousands and thousands of policies to find that, um, it'll be nice to just be able to say, I wanna do this. Um, can I do this? And if so, what conditions do I need? And it'll, it'll tell you, yes, but you need to be within coming from this uh, source VPC, at which point you can then focus your efforts on getting, how would you get to that VPC as part of your attack chain, attack path, or you know, whatever. So, um, wrapping up, I am's hard. I don't think that's a surprise. Um, but it does sort of have to be. I think we make an awful lot of noise about I am being a very difficult thing, and it's a pain in the ass for our security people. I think there are actually some pretty good reasons for that. Um, we quite like SMT solvers for this. Um, they're agnostic of future AWS updates, for one. You know, we don't have to load in new permissions as they get added. Um, but they are an option. They're not the only one. Um, you know, and there were a lot of the limitations to this kind of approach that we talked about in the the previous talk that are all entirely valid. Um, and the key thing really is it's very useful to be able to get a properly reasoned answer to, is this possible, is it not? But actually just being able to ask that question on one particular resource for one action um, at a time is not necessarily that useful. So really, it's a building block that we intend to open source for it to be used in whatever else people come up with. Hopefully, you'll all have some awesome ideas. Probably better than ours. So, um, to wrap up, uh, what we're open sourcing, so I am Spy, and check the forward cloud select, cloud sec Slack tomorrow um, for the GitHub link. Um, I am Hunter, a couple of weeks from now once I've finished tidying up the code base. Uh, and as a bit of an Easter egg, uh, we've also just released our internal cloud security knowledge base um, up, on the, up on the internet for everyone to go have a look at. Um, and the repository for that will also be open source, so please do have a look, contribute, etc. Um, the approach we've taken to that is really to gather up and reference all of the existing material that the community has put together. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. Um, so that's been the focus. We've had it internally for a while and I finally got permission to, to release it. So there it is. And with that, thank you for having us. You guys so there was one comment in the slack I think it's been answered but if you want to speak to I am spy again about that being open sourced and about the timeline for that uh, yes yeah, so end of day tomorrow is the plan for that um, there was a couple of late nights getting that fixed up but we're almost there so and we've got a couple of questions at the back there
So how do you, how much confidence do you have in the IAM model that you're using? So for example, there are a lot of, you know, very tricky little bits like permissions boundaries apply to when the role is referenced as a principal, but not when the assumed role is referenced as the principal. So there are like little things like that. How much confidence do you have that the model that you've built for it actually matches reality? At the moment, I can guarantee you it does not because we haven't implemented all of that yet. Sure. Uh, so our idea longer term is to identify all of those quirks and we're not gonna find all of them because you know we don't have the full documentation from AWS on how every quirk lives. But over time as a community, we will learn about more of these quirks. And I think the idea from my end at least is eventually build up a test suite thing for IAM Spy with all these quirks in so we can then you know make sure that whenever we're upgrading it, adding new things, those quirks still remain. Yeah, I think we've, we've taken account of a lot of the really common ones that we know about. Um, I don't doubt there's stuff that we don't know about as a, as a pair of devs, so there probably will be extra bugs and things to find. Um, but certainly as a starting point, um, you know, it's improved the accuracy of the tooling that we were building internally previously, um, and hopefully over time it'll get even better. Um, what permissions does IAM Spy need to be able to run? So like what permissions do I need to have to be able to run IAM Spy? Sure, so essentially it's all designed to work offline. Um, one of the contexts that this was built for is uh, red teaming. We want to make as little noise as possible. Um, in theory, so you need AWS IAM get account authorization details. That's the big one to get all of the, um, the account policies. And then if you want to pull in the resource policies or the SCPs, you need the ability to read those as well. Um, the way we've been working on it internally, um, we had our cloud team do a dump of all of that and we get them to update the dumps periodically because they don't want to give us all of that. Um, but that's, that's broadly speaking what you need uh, to gotcha. make it work. An another question I have, um, so, and this is in the, the, if you're running it against the online resources, what does performance look like if we're talking, let's say, thousands of AWS accounts? So, blunt answer is S&T solvers are not fast. Um, so the way that we've been using this on really big estates is um, IAM Spy pre-computes and caches the model. Um, so it's a case of kicking off all of that model generation, uh, ideally parallelized on an estate that, that scale, um, leaving it for a while and coming back and then actually asking all the questions. Um, once you've got the model built, it's a fair bit faster, but building that model does take time. That makes sense, thank you. Other questions in the room? Uh, what is this uh, written in, in terms of programming languages, and do you intend for others to consume it as a library into other tooling rather than just a standalone CLI tool? Sure, so Python um, at the moment, um, that's what it's written in, and it is, it has a CLI wrap around the front of it, but at its core it's a library that you can use, and that's how I am Hunter's using it um, at the moment. Um, you know, the, the CLI is, is really is a very light wrapper around the library, so it's, it's there to be used, um, integrated into other tools. Any other questions in the room? Um, how would IAM Spy search um, resources um, to find out which resource policies apply to which uh, principle? So IAM Spy itself doesn't dig around in your AWS account. Um, the idea is that you download the models yourself or download the, the JSON data out of AWS and then run it through. Um, so at present, we, we hack together a bunch of internal scripts that dump out the various different pieces you need. Um, but yeah, it's essentially you're relying on whatever enumeration you've got. Um, unfortunately, we can't open source a lot of that because it's part of some other stuff we do internally. But um, at, its, at its core, it's the same as any other enumeration exercise in AWS, right? Um, yeah. Any final questions? All right, thank you guys. Um. Well, thanks for having us.